Hello everyone and welcome back to Metal Gear Solid 4. This is part 2 where we're running around in circles but we're ready to go. I'm very excited to continue the story from where we left off. Um, because I saved the game right here, I'm allowed to pick up this stuff again, which is great. So I actually got to look into the Playboy last episode and now I get to keep it for throwing in some other poor guy's direction next time. So, so that's great. Um, and then I just stumbled upon an RPG while I'm just trying to talk to you guys. So, so that's great. So I also have an RPG. Um, I don't know if I can... I should be able to wield the RPG. Bargains at Drebin's shop every Wednesday and Sunday get 20% off. I'm assuming that's in real time because it is currently Sunday. Does that mean I get cheaper things in real life? Guess I'm only playing Metal Gear Solid 4 on a Wednesday or a Sunday then, guys. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I'm gonna, you know, get used to get used to it again. See what we're doing. We're gonna push on to uh, to rendezvous with our guys over this way. Let's have a chat to Otacon so he reminds us. Snake, we've got to meet up with our informants. The rendezvous point is farther up the street, beyond that collapsed building. You'll need to pass through it to get to the other side. Wonderful. And last episode was last episode was uh, intense. It was just like awesome to be playing back as our boy Solid Snake again, but old this time. Get some answers as to what's actually uh, some answers as to why he looks the way that he does and uh, what's going on with that. It's been great to see Otacon again. Uh, I'm having a I'm having a blast so far. So we're gonna continue playing, figuring out whether I should be going up the stairs or through the hole in the wall. But we're just gonna explore, take our time, and and enjoy ourselves, because uh, this game is a hell of a lot of fun. So far. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Got some stuff over here. Good to know. Some guys getting blown up on that roof. Also good to see. It's honestly like the the inv whoa 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 chill out chill out snake no fall damage I'll I'll take it no fall damage um, this this suit obviously probably condenses the uh, the impact so that's that's cool the walls could come down any second. I love how alive this is all feeling like I honestly feel like the walls are gonna come down at any second and there's genuinely so much gameplay stuff going on just like around the corner with people getting like absolutely wrecked. It just makes me like playing this. I just really wish that they put this on PS4. Like imagine putting this on PS4 with a with a nice a nice frame rate, you know, just a good generous 60 frames maybe. Hello, sir. Hanging from here. Now, someone told me that the, the codec is still contextual, but I don't know if it's gonna, if I'm looking at something, if it's gonna tell me anything from Otacon. Snake, I'm not thrilled with the idea. In fact, I don't like it at all. But business is business. From now on, you'll be using the Mark II to deal with Drebin. Whenever you pick up a weapon that's the same kind as one you already have, any ammo inside will be added to your stock and the weapon itself will be transferred to Drebin. He'll calculate the weapon's value and deposit the corresponding number of points into your account. Use those points to buy new weapons from him or to turn ID guns into non-ID guns. I've added a Drebin shop option to the Mark II menu. Check it out. Thanks, Otacon. We'll just let that guy who's hanging there just, just exist on his own. Got some ammo. Dude, that's so cool. Hello, guys. I don't. I don't think these are our friends. Nope. Nope. They're both down. Let's stay down too while we're here. I'm just gonna pick up your weapons. Everyone's just getting taken out. It's very interesting because this isn't something that we've uh, this isn't something we've experienced at all so far with Metal Gear Solid like literally being in the middle of a war zone with a bunch of other enemies like taking each other out. Like what we're used to seeing is just 
we're the only guy and we're just kind of sneaking in. Um, unless it's been like portable ops when we've been able to change characters. But this is a, a very like refreshing environment to be in. As I say, as I'm literally in a war zone in the Middle East. A very refreshing environment. From a from like a gameplay perspective is what I is what I really mean when I'm talking about this though. Up here. Oh, let's just let's go back up, shall we? Up against the wall. Nope. Let's let's go up against the wall, Snake. You can do it. And we'll slowly crawl across here, creep across. Nope, yep, you, you're nailing it, Snake. I could have just, like, I guess I could have just done this as well. Two ways to do it. It's not really the setting that I at all expected for for Metal Gear. Like, I never expected to be chucked in the middle of the of a, of a war zone and then still having to, like, sneak around and do stuff. Oh, it just got really dark all of a sudden. Nice. That's where we're supposed to go. <laughs> it's like it's being shot on like an actual camera, like in it's got like scuff and like dirt all over the the lens of the camera. There. Go away! I'm not done yet! Stop right there! No! Get back here! I was like, oh, someone's in the bathroom. No, someone's literally taking a shit in an upside down barrel. What the f what the fuck? <laughs> What the fuck, man? Ah, we can use this as a disguise instead of a cardboard box. Wonderful. This is literally Snake's first thought. Good, good stuff, Snake. Mmm, good circular structure. I can hide in this. Looks good. I'm gonna tell Otacon about this. Otacon. I can hide in barrels. I've acquired a drum. Equip it to hide inside. Wonderful. Much more believable than a cardboard box, apparently. Um, so, I've obviously got to equip it in my in my items, right? Uh, drum can, nine kilograms. I want to know who the hell that character is. Oh my god. Hurry to the rendezvous. <laughs> God, this is so dumb. Who's that character who was literally caught with their pants out? They looked interesting. I'm just a barrel, guys. Just an... Just a, uh, just a casual barrel. Not suspicious whatsoever. Just chilling out here. Do we just have to go, like, straight down this road? It's never gonna be that easy, but we'll see. Hello everyone. Again, just an unsuspecting barrel. Chilling out. Where did that guy go that would literally got run off? Over here. Form up. I'm just a barrel. Just just run around me, guys. Ah! God damn it. Why can't you just learn to have situational awareness? Just run around me. God damn it. I'm too old for this, guys. <laughs> Fucking hell, dude. This is the worst place to be, like, stealthy in. In the middle of a war zone. Leave me alone. You want to fight? Because we can fight.
Very interesting third person perspective. There you go. Goodbye, sir. How to avoid getting seen. Kill everyone that sees you. That's exactly how this works. Now let me eat some rations. God, it's so nice to be able to eat rations for health. This is a good way to go around the action, I guess. A lot of, lot of good hiding spots. Sniper. Hello guys, how you doing? Go for it. Alright, cool. They're moving, they're moving. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. He's also dead. Cool. Snake, Good. Watch out. That area is covered by PMC snipers. Boy, this is gonna be tough. If only you could find a route that takes you behind them, avoids them altogether. Man, you're really speaking my language. It's almost as if that's exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, let's do that then. This way? This looks like a way to me. Oh god. It's just me, an unsuspecting oil drum. You guys just keep chilling out, I'll just go down this way. That's still the sniper area, so we'll just go down this way instead. How we doing guys? I think we're doing pretty good. As we hear the sounds of all the people dying by snipers in the background. Alright, through here. Trying to see as much as possible. Oh god. Damn it. Up the stairs we go. Hello guys. What's good? M14 baby, automatic sniper. Alright, I got the sniper. Awesome. No reinforcements for you guys. Laser sight. Why does it keep getting dark? The game just like... The brightness keeps just like changing depending on the area that I'm sitting in right now. It's really, really frustrating me. You're out of here. Like if I go over here. Just like opening a door is like really dark for some reason. Give me items. Thank you. So I don't think I'll- be, I won't be able to use this, uh... I'll have to go to Droben's shop, right? And he can, like, unlock the thing for me? So many- so many parts and stuff that he can do. Okay. Interesting. Maybe not. Oh, I could actually change the um, auto manual register camo pattern. Ah, okay, okay. 
and chest camo. That's cool. Just ignored the camouflage menu the whole time. That's fine. It's got some interesting stuff in there. Let's go down this way. It just feels like there's just, there's just so much that I'm going to miss. There's just so much to do here. Am I crazy? Oh, I can't crawl under the car. I was so looking forward to seeing if I could crawl under the car then to avoid that encounter. Back to being a an, an unsuspecting oil drum. It's so hard to see. Oh, hello. Hey guys. It's just me, a barrel. No! What the fuck? Dude, out of the all of the So like out of everywhere that he could have ran to he decides to run straight into me. Like, straight into me. Oh my god. God. The PS3 controller. The PS3 controller. That is something that I'm really not used to. It's so weird to go back to a PS3 controller, to be honest. Just let me be, guys. Just let me live. Uh, who? Enemy who? Ain't me. Big open area. Lots of dead people, a lot of missiles. What are we doing? We're in the middle of the open. This is a disaster. Doorway. 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 <laughs> I was like, what are we in? Just a huge open area. We're just going to get absolutely wrecked. Like, okay. That was a bit of a hectic way to start the game. I would have preferred, uh, would have preferred it to ease into it, but there you go. We, we make do with the crazy environments that we're given to navigate. Advent Palace is where we're on now. Really got to make use of the, the pistols that we've got. Can I crawl over it to disarm it? Yes. Sleep gas mine. Pop up sleep gas delivery device. Ready it with L1. Plant it with R1. Pop open and release sleep gas when approached. Uh, detonates immediately upon being planted near a dead body. Cool. Sleep gas. It's a nice new thing. Let's get this one as well. Use that for later. I wonder if we're supposed to be going up. I think so, because it looks like the destination from this map is on the fourth floor. Because there's a circled... Ah! Man, I really didn't see that at all. It's so dark. Was there, like, a claymore on the staircase? There isn't one on this one. Interesting. Got noodles. Okay, the destination is on the fourth floor, but not here. <laughs> I need to be on the fourth floor around the other side. So let's go around here. I don't know if this is an occupied area. I don't think so. Doesn't seem like there's anyone in here. 
Even though it seems like such an area that I would navigate with like a bunch of people around. Can't can't call the lift, no. Just slowly crawl through here. Don't mind me guys, just trying to find the staircase over this side. Pick up more sleeping gas stuff. And another one here. This looks like where I need to be. Yes. Wonderful. Alright, let's go up to the fourth floor. Right, let's have a look at look here. We gotta be more careful to see if there's anything on the staircase. We look okay. This looks good. Cool. Wonderful. We're outside. Alright, so we just need to go through there, through here, and then this is our rendezvous point. We can go in there. Ooh. Oh! I literally went to press the button to go prone. Well, at least we know what they do. They put our old boy to sleep. Quite well, in fact. Quite well indeed. All right, let's let's see what's in here. I'm going down this way. Classic Metal Gear Solid vent routine. Hello, little rat boy. Can I see down there? Not really. I can kind of see. Doesn't look like there's anything particularly interesting. More noodles. We love we love more noodles. There's a gun. Yep. Sold it. Nice. Just keep moving through here to see if this is where we're supposed to go or whether this is just a little secret spot. Where are we on the map? Okay. Oh, it's just a long winding vent. Cool. Got something here. Yep. More tranquilizer shots. We got a vent that we can drop down in here. Okay. That will take me down on the floor below. Why would I want to do that, though? Any way that I can vent faster? Maybe? And then another open vent here, as well. Why would I do this, though? Okay, so if I want to just leave out here, I can. Interesting. Not entirely sure why. Because this just takes us down to the third floor again. Okay. This is why I'm like looking around here, like it feels like there's so much, but at the same time I feel like I can push past a lot of the places because it's just empty areas. If there's anything I should be looking out for a bit more, then definitely let me know, but otherwise I'm just going to over get overwhelmed and take forever to actually navigate and go anywhere. <laughs> and I'd like to actually go somewhere, like here, our rendezvous point. We got there eventually. Drop your weapon. This is the guy who's taking a poop. Drop your weapon. All right. Here. 
easy now. Don't move! You haven't even taken the safety off, rookie. <laughs> Careful, I'm no rookie. I'm a ten-year vet. Like Meryl. Meryl flashback. It looks for the... Yeah! <laughs> yes, like the chat he gave to Meryl in the first game. You ever survived ten years? Don't move. Excuse me, hang on a second. I recognize that voice. CQC, real big boss, huh? A real big boss? You're a real big boss, huh? Lower your weapon. Shut the foxhound. Foxhound logo. Wouldn't try anything funny if I were you. Box. Snake? Yay! Meryl's back, baby! Meryl? Meryl! Is that you? Look at Meryl! Look at our girl! What happened to your face? She looks good. Accelerated aging. They don't know the cause. Oh my god. Meryl, you're my informant in the US military. And you must be the inspector sent by the UN. Akiba. Akiba. <laughs> Sorry. This is Rat Patrol Team Zero One. We're with the CID, one of the bodies investigating PMC activity. <laughs> First hounds, now rats. Foxhound. You can have this back. <laughs> What is your problem? Right? You okay? Stomach pains. Diarrhea. Oh, we just we're literally just flashing back to the previous scene. I was trying to make out what that was. It's just him pooping in the goddamn barrel. What a what a weird way to have a Meryl and Snake reunion is to have a goddamn poopy diarrhea joke character. Classic, classic. We that's it's been yeah. Since Liquid arrived in the area, and since then, this woman's been with him. She doesn't look like a combatant. Probably some kind of advisor, maybe a scientist. He's trying to see it, because he's, he's, it goes blurry when he looks up close. So, you're the commander of this O1 unit. He's losing his eyesight as well. Something wrong with that? Here, I'll introduce you to the team. That's Ed, our radio man and sniper. The sleeping giant is Jonathan. <laughs> Exclamation mark here. Love it. Stand behind him. He hates it when people go around his back. Jonathan survived portable ops, guys. Johnny. Oh. Commander. I finished installing the sensors. Johnny. They really took the Johnny needed to go to the toilet joke to 11, didn't they? 
Anyway. You're all grown up. Maybe it's because someone taught me well. A certain legendary hero who suddenly disappeared. Uh. You quit the unit. Me? <laughs> I never gave up on you. Or on Foxhound. Back then, I just wanted you to accept me. I wanted you to turn around and see who I was. But I've put the past behind. I'm done playing little love games. So, what are you here for? Threat assessment. The PMCs. Really? Because I heard a rumor there's an assassin out there targeting their leader. Well, that's some rumor. I'm only here because the UN wants me to assess the impact and effects of PMCs on their refugee protection efforts. That's all? More than enough for a retired vet like me. <laughs> I know he's plotting an insurrection. But as long as AT security's system is in place, there's no way he'll succeed. How can you be so sure? They've implemented a system that monitors in real time every single soldier engaged in combat action, whether he's state army or PMC. Each individual soldier has been fully ID tagged with nano machines injected into their bodies for that purpose. The nano machines keep track of the soldiers and their real time personal data 24 hours a day. They monitor each man's position, movement speed, reserve ammo, firing accuracy, wounds, rations, water intake and supply. God damn. Treated, heart rate, blood pressure and sugar levels, oxygen. All the data gathered on body condition, on sensory organ data showing pain and fear, data on every internal response within the body. All of it is collected by an AI at the system's core. This data is monitored at HQ to enable command to make quicker, more precise, more rational decisions. It also enables crisis management for each individual soldier. It's being used by the U.S. military, by state armies and allied countries, by PMCs. Even police agencies are starting to adopt it. Unless they agree to implement the system, PMCs aren't permitted to send troops anywhere. You've got these system nanomachines and you too. Of course. Our unit plays by the rules, same as everybody else. It was creepy at first, knowing you're being watched 24-7. But I've gotten used to it. It gives us a lot of advantages in the field too. We get a clearer picture of what's going on around us, so there's less confusion during missions. And our nanomachines communicate with each other, making teamwork a lot smoother. And that's not all the system does for us. It's also a security guarantee against the PMCs. Security guarantee? That's right. The PMCs are combat groups without states or ideologies. They're not fighting out of nationalism or for a cause. They don't care why the war is being fought. They're just bodies fighting on someone else's behalf. They're mercenaries, a commodity. So it's easy to imagine them betraying their clients by joining the enemy or refusing to fight or committing humanitarian atrocities. To keep these things in check, they ensured that no one can use firearms or military vehicles without the proper system ID. It's true for every piece of equipment out there. So even if the PMCs tried to mount a terrorist attack or coup d'etat, their weapons and equipment would automatically be locked out. They wouldn't be able to move, attack, or engage in combat of any kind. And there's more. All the data on their position, personnel, and combat strength is leaked to us by the nanomachines. Even if they manage to circumvent the system by getting the nanomachines out of each soldier's body, they'd be losing their IDs in the process, so they couldn't use their weapons. And the Patriots are behind this. Lalelule, no. What are you talking about? Never mind. So this system is foolproof, huh? Completely. They call it SOP. Sons of the Patriots. 
The AI that controls it is a tightly guarded secret, both at Arms Tech Security, where it was developed, and at the Pentagon. There's no way a third party could get control of it. I just met a guy who said he can launder ID guns. The system does have holes. There can't be more than a few hundred of those gun launderers. It's just a grassroots movement. It's not like they can affect the entire PMC war machine. Anyway, Liquid would have had to register as a PMC in the system to assemble an army that massive. His PMCs might even exceed the U.S. military in terms of numbers, but as long as they're registered, their soldiers' activities are constantly being monitored. Oh, there he is. So long as the U.S. responds immediately when Liquid makes his move, we can take them down by force. By force, huh? When Arsoc heard about Liquid's plans, they sent us to sniff around the PMCs. Even with this SOP keeping an eye on things, there are always trouble spots to deal with in the field. Disorderly conduct, disobeying orders, contract violations. We act as backup for the system by monitoring the soldiers. PMC inspections are always carried out on the battlefield. That's why we're authorized to carry and use weapons. We've lost five inspection teams in the past few months alone. They were all undercover inside Liquid's PMCs. Then, if you got caught... We'd be exterminated like rats. But we're smarter than that. We've been mingling with the PMCs. And after three months of searching God knows how many battlefields, we finally tracked him down. Mm -hmm. Okay. When we reported that we'd found Liquid, our superiors ordered us to provide the UN investigators with intel. <laughs> but I didn't know it'd be you. Didn't the Colonel tell you he was sending me? Colonel? Don't tell me it's Campbell! Yeah. <laughs> he put you up to this? You didn't know. Uh, you gotta be kidding! You expect me to work with my uncle? Meryl. This is bullshit. He's not my father. Well, good, Meryl. Was she doing her own flashbacks just then? Is that why it was playing the flashback sound effect? She was having her own flashbacks. To Campbell in MGS1. So, you knew. Yeah. Little violation of the need to know role. Then, why are you still calling him uncle? You're still calling him Colonel. He's your father. As far as I'm concerned, we're still uncle and niece. I will never forgive that womanizing piece of shit. Meryl. Meryl. He, uh, remarried. Really? His new wife's about my age. I hear she's even got a kid. It's as if he's given up on making up with his own daughter. Egotistical pigs. Commander. What is it? There's twenty of them. And they're not from that PMC praying mantis either. It's the frog. His private troops. The frogs. Oh crap. This is not good. Oh, oh. Uh, were you being followed? No. Akiba. Uh, they might have seen the reflection off my scope lens. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Hang on. You guys think it was my fault? Oh. 
Oh, 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 no. Oh. It wasn't my fault, I swear. It wasn't my fault. Oh, man. Oh, look, I... Dumbass. We're moving out. Meryl, where's Liquid? At a camp up ahead. I'll fill you in later, if we're still alive. The fucking MacBook on the table. Snake and Meryl. Ah, so they can jump like fro Look at their look at their shoes that they got on. Yo, they look cool as fuck. Eye contact. These guys are with Liquid's private army. Shoot first, think later. We'll use the stairs and get out through the back door on the first floor. <laughs> we'll change the route as necessary. I'm on point. Stay close. Got it? Got it. Got it. Akiba, breathe deep. Got it. We've got a real live legendary hero with us. Try not to choke. <laughs> Move. I, Akiba is such a liability. Like just to have a Johnny reference. <laughs> Ooh, we got combat happening. Okay. What do they sound like? Oh, look at that! That's so cool! Having allies, like, actually shooting with us, this is insane. This is not at all what I expected to happen. This is so cool. Uh, just so we're like, you know, we've gone from cutscene to gameplay straight away, so... What are you doing, Johnny? Just because we've gone from cutscene to gameplay straight away. I'll just pause for a second, so we'll, we'll have a debrief. Um, is... I think the Johnny the Johnny reference is funny, so that we got, we got Johnny. I think the diarrhea stuff is getting a little bit overdone. It's kind of distracting... The serious undertones of that scene. It's like, oh, let's talk about Liquid and, and Meryl's daddy issues and Snake and Meryl reunited and oh, I've got diarrhea and they saw my scope lens. It's like, why would he be in Fox? <laughs> He's such an idiot. But it's, yeah, that's Kojima injecting his humor in there. That's that's for sure. But um, I, 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 Meryl looks great, and the Meryl and Snake reunion is is an awesome touch. But yeah, I can see what we, I can see what you mean when this like the cutscenes, um, like that could have been like half the length if it just got to the good stuff. But I know that you know that's us asking a bit too much of Kojima in his storytelling. <laughs> the enemy sent in a squad to hunt you down. You've got to get out of there as fast as possible. There won't be any way out of the building until at least the second floor. Work with Meryl's team to find a way down and get to the exit. I actually love that we actually, uh, like, have a team that we're actually sitting with and doing this and doing this with. So the f they're called the frogs. Snake, you've got to keep up with the zero one unit. They've got really good mobility. This is so cool! We love Meryl, oh my god. Just a few. Oh my god.
Now this is why this area looks so built for combat before. It's because it is! Don't really react to getting shot until you're dead, do you? Oh, this is where I should have put the, uh... The sleeping gas stuff. Jesus Christ, look at him go. Is that one of mine? No. Amazing. Um, shall we try this petro bomb? Eat my eat my goddamn flames. I don't know if that's really doing anything. Okay, it's not as not as effective as I thought. Not as effective as I thought it would be. Come on. There we go. There we go. We got a couple on fire. That's that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to get a couple of them on fire. What are you guys doing in here still? Oh, I'm supposed to be going this way. Hey guys. Hello. Oh god. I'm really used to using the tr I'm I'm so used to using the triggers to aim and shoot in a in a game that having to use L1 and R1 is so different. So different to what I'm used to. Please guys, I'm just a I'm just a little veteran. I don't know what I'm doing. Take it that there's just gonna end up being like kind of like unlimited of them almost. They're just gonna keep coming after me. I just wanna keep getting all of your money, guys. What's up, team? Are we going this way? Oh, this is just the same area. Okay. Where are we going, guys? Ooh, iPod music. Level 3 warning from Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. It's so funny. So you can just find these rare, like, rare music and stuff. This is super interesting. Meryl Silverberg. Not the reunion that I really uh, could have ever expected, but I but I appreciate it. Contact. They were supposed to be in love, guys. They were supposed to be in love. Oh Jesus Christ! So much more action-y than I was expecting. Oh my god, stop! Johnny's the worst! He's just literally gonna shit himself right now. Where is he? Oh, yeah. He's even got... He's even got stinky lines. He's even got stink lines, dude. Why? Kojima, why will you do this to me?
This is so ridiculous. What other weapons have I got that I can equip right now? That's actually like usable. Uh, I can use the AK, but it looks like it uses the same uses the same bullets. RPG with one bullet. And put some of the sleep mines down. Yeah, I don't really have uh, don't really have much for ammo. I got a P90, but I need to actually I need to actually get it unlocked. Yes, okay, so you need to have Dribbin unlock the weapon, so you can do it that way, cool. Now that's much cooler, okay, so he can just literally unlock them for me, um, by going to equip them. Nice, cool, um, that's lovely. In that case, now I feel much better. I'm getting curious about the codec, because, like, how useful is it going to be to keep, to keep running it? To get out of that building now. There's an exit on a lower floor if you can get down there. Fight past the enemy with Meryl's team and get to the bottom. Cool. Let's equip the P90. Chilling out in the bathroom. Ah, I keep going to aim with the... As soon as I go to aim with this and then I'm holding the thumbstick. So it just does this. Interesting. I could totally make the Mark II go and do stuff, couldn't I? Which is interesting. Hello, sir. Hello, team. I got you. I need you to disarm some things for me. What the fuck? Did Johnny just get knocked? It. Jesus. Ugh. Did Johnny just get knocked out? Akiba's been knocked out. Great. He's been knocked out. Well, that's good. What if I? What if I did something? What if I did a thing? Hey guys. Let's put a little sleepy mine in. Nice. Oh no! Snake! They got Meryl! Oh god. Mission failed. Because Meryl died. Um, also, where's am I? Am I literally going to have like a epileptic fit, dude? When Meryl's death happens. Move. All right, let's uh, let's do this again, I guess. Get down, old man. Get sleep, guest boys. Get sleep, guest. Nice. Did they get sleep gas? Yeah, look at that. Check that out. Oh, that's cool. Steal all of your gear, guys. That's cool. And now they're asleep. Sleepy time, babies. That's so funny. Come on, guys. Let's push through. Let's keep going. Ooh, did he give me something? Ooh, he dropped me a little mine. Cool. Oh god, guys. Come on. Let's not get blown up, shall we? Ooh, Jesus. Yep. Just slowly reload to shoot that guy off the roof. Give me the iPod music again. Switch to the P90 because we're getting all of the ammo for it ever. Ah! 
Dude, the, they're weird, like, death-like animation. Like, you run over them and they literally disappear into ashes. And they let out this weird-ass scream. It's, like, legitimately terrifying. It's a really cool way to have, like, not too many, like, dead enemies take up the screen. Is just have, like, that weird fucking thing happen. I guess I'll just keep putting this sleeping gas thing on the ground for uh, when they come up behind us and they get sleepy time. Let's keep going down, guys. Oh, it's comedic relief dialed up to 11, honestly. Contact. Oh, hi guys. How you, how you doing? Jesus. I love the solid eye. It's so cool. Actually being able to see how much health they've got. Um... Hello. Take that. Take that again. Take that. Get on fire, please. Oh, God. Johnny, stop pooping your pants! Honestly, sir. Like these actual like unique battle animations as well. <laughs> I didn't notice that the first time that Meryl actually Meryl actually kicks him to then trigger the the poopy time. I kind of wish that the, there's a bit more of an explosion, like a explosion radius on the Molotovs. They don't really do much. You good, Meryl? Let's keep pushing. Keep Meryl alive. That's the plan. Ah, yeah, because I have to wait for Johnny. All right. To get to the traps. Where is he? There you are. Come on, Johnny. Ah, oh, this is what. Oh, this is how it happened last time. Okay. Okay, this is how it happened. Akiba's been knocked out. Oh, Meryl. Ah. How much health has she got? All right, she's good. She's like at full health. This is fine. Oh god. Oh god damn it. So much P90 ammo, not complaining. Meryl's doing okay. She's just chilling. What do you mean? Are we good? Johnny, wake up. <laughs> Damn, like, they're, like, the amount of detail in just, like, the, the situations, like, where I'm stood or where I'm choosing to look, like, the unique animations and the dialogue that's happening that I can just completely miss if I'm not stood in the right area. Like, crazy. Alright, we made it. I love seeing Meryl as, like, leader of a foxhound squad. Like, she's come so far. <laughs> She's come so far since the first game, dude. But Meryl was so much more capable still, even then, than Johnny is right now. He can do he can do bomb disarmament. So that's that's one thing. He can disarm the bombs.
Oh! <laughs> Excuse me, buddy. You're not gonna wait until I leave the area? God damn it. Kojima did that on purpose. He did that on purpose. Oh, it's not over. I actually kind of like that there's like an action segment to to Metal Gear. I actually I actually kind of like it. I need to get used to it, that's for sure. But I like that they've added th like third person aiming and shooting in and has like dedicated sneaking segments and also shooting segments like Something that's always kind of bugged me sometimes is whenever the previous Metal Gear games have gone like full combat stuff, I've always kind of struggled because it felt really awkward. And this does have a little bit of awkwardness in it, and that is due to like the way that uh, it's controlling, and also just like the frame rate is not so smooth. But like outside of that, like I'm actually enjoying this quite a lot. Quite a lot. We're going through this way. All right. Take it from here, as in, you just gonna stay back there? Where is? Ah, oh, there we go. I was waiting for that person to go down that whole time. Cause I can't, I can't jump over there. Jump over the ledge. Nice. More cutscenes. I like that she's got like a bullet earring similar to how Ocelot had a, uh, like a bullet around his neck. In MGS3. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Honestly. He should have he should have worn his uh darker brown pants. That's for sure. Why just make that a cutscene? <laughs> just make the, what I just did a cutscene. Like, <laughs> jump down the elevator, back into the new cutscene. Dude, these frogs look so cool. Come on, guys. Yes! I was like, show your show your ability. Yes. I was like, show that you are capable. Fuck yeah. Uh, <laughs> how dare you shoot me? Dude, that's bizarre how they die. Tell me more about it. The nano machine network inside each unit member's body lets us share each other's senses. That's so cool. They can see what I see. And it helps control pain. Is that part of a system too? With SOP, my team can literally operate as one. Except for Akiba. Well, <laughs> yep. Certain someone who's not much of a team player. Fucking hell. Um, what do you think? 
Is your age of heroes finally over? <laughs> I'm no hero. Never was. Never will be. You haven't changed at all, Snake. But... Your body... Are you gonna be all right? This get-up doubles as a muscle suit. I could still get around. Liquid's camp is up ahead. I'll mark it on your map. Thanks. Akiba! One man's blunder can compromise the whole team. I'm sorry, Commander. This man better get some good character development and turn into a badass at some point. Old Snake has such a good, like, he has such a strong face, like such a good side profile. I love how he looks. Meryl and Snake in the future, like 2014, looks so fucking good. Brief, brief little adventure. Brief little adventure with Meryl and the squad of Fox. So cool. Otacon, I know where Liquid is. Yeah, I'm confirming the location. It's to the north of where you are. Meryl's really changed, hasn't she, Snake? She's a lot more self-assured. <laughs> I wonder how much of that has to do with the system. The senses you used to develop through extended training and experience can now be obtained without even working for them. Seems once you're under the system's control, you don't even need experience at all. It even beats that VR training that was all the rage a few years back. Yeah. The growing need for PMCs has led to the creation of a more reliable, cost-effective supply of elite soldiers. It's also made the child soldier phenomenon more problematic than ever. Can the nanomachines do anything to counteract post-traumatic stress disorder? Good question. They might provide a degree of psychological stability. You think so? That geek kid Akiba, <laughs> he was really starting to lose it. And technologically, the system should be able to optimize each soldier's personality traits. And that big guy... He didn't seem to be feeling any pain at all. Augmenting the soldier's existing experience and psychological fortitude. But a soldier's gotta have more than that. The times have changed, Snake. Just like Meryl. <sighs> Snake, hurry to the PMC camp. Based on what Meryl told us, Liquid should be there. Nano machines don't really seem to be working for Akiba though, do they? <laughs> like, honestly. <laughs> honestly. They really don't seem to be doing the job, in my opinion. <laughs> um, but yeah, great, great little, great little scene. So now we're... Time to head for the surface. Now we're on our own again. Back how, back how it should be, and we are going all the way over there. Okay, lovely. All the way over there. Good stuff. Um, I'm going to have a look at our weapons. Um, can I just remove? Yeah, we can just remove. We'll just keep the P90 and the operator. Um, remove that for now. Um, maybe I'll put the silencer back on this guy, now that I'm actually using it to shoot people, because I did check when I was having a look before. Ooh. Oh, you can buy it. Oh, that's cool that it just shows that you can equip it and then it gives you the option to buy it. Putting Drebin's shop abilities just in the actual normal inventory without having to go exactly into the shop is a very, very good thing. Um, so that's that's awesome. Um, I'll leave that off for now, but that's, but that's cool. Because that means I can customize this. Yes, and it has like stuff that I can buy as well. And get a suppressor for the P90. Um, blind enemies lowers your camo index. Oh, that's that's awesome. That's good stuff. I really like that. Um, let's proceed then. In that case, move on. See where we're going. Yeah, I noticed that the suppressor has health, which is uh, 
a little bit unfortunate that I was doing some shots with it earlier, but I did manage to take it off. And then we'll just have to like buy a new one or something. I wonder where the I wonder where Fox is headed then. Instead of just coming with us. Hi guys. You move on, because apparently I don't know whose side that I'm on anymore. My back! Where, where am I supposed to go from here? Ah, oh, it just goes into a cutscene. Right, okay. Well, I guess I gotta watch out for this guy. Sneaking in, sneaking but in behind them. Talk to talk to Otacon again. I just want to keep talking to him at random moments and see if I get anything else. It looks like the militia have got themselves an armored tank. Yep, a BMP3. It's an old Soviet-designed IFV. It's not quite up to MBT defensive standards, but it's got enough armor to protect it against medium-caliber machine gun rounds. The militia could use it as a barricade against PMC gunfire. Use it to your advantage to help you proceed without having to face the PMCs. Okay. Use it as a barrier. Okay. Snake, use that IFV as a shield to help you get to Liquid's PMC camp. Okay. Cool. Hey, hang on a minute. Ah, oh, the map HUD tells me the wind direction as well. That's really neat. Someone's working on something in this bottom left corner. You can't really see it whenever I pause, but I get a little screen over here that gives me that information. Okay, so we're using the tank. Oh god. Um. Hi. So I need to keep using the tank to shield me from these guys. God damn. I was literally just thinking about that, dude. Or I can just go this way. Oh, I can go this way. Well, I got options. Which way do I want to go? Here's the thing, I just feel like I'm going to get given, like, items and opportunities around every, every corner. I can just choose multiple paths. It's, re it's really, in, uh, really an interesting adjustment, because I had no idea what I was getting myself into playing this game. Whether it would be more of the same, or whether it would do a whole bunch of new stuff being on the PS3 over like the PS2 era, and it definitely does a lot of new stuff. Slowly just go across here. Where's that tank at? There. Oh, Jesus. Oh, well, the tank's gone. Oh, hey, hey, I'm, I'm your friend. Don't attack me. Remember when we were using the, uh, the tank as a shield and now it's dead? Oh! Oh, okay, cool. He didn't attack me. That's cool. Well, I only got to use it as a shield for a certain amount of time. And now I'm back to having to just... Go up with these guys, I guess, in the battlefield. The oh, nope. Fuck. Hang on. I love how, like, there's, they're not able to get reinforcements anywhere near as much as they would in past games, because they're like, we're in a war zone, man. We got no, we got no army for you. 
Make do. Let me go up the ladder, please. Hello, sir. Hello, little sniper boy. Oh. Let me get, let me seek you see. Come on, let me seek you see you, sir. What are you, what are you doing? I'm literally CQC compatible, and it's not even grabbing him. Dude, what the fuck? I'm trying to grab you. Ah, uh, fuck it, I'll just shoot you then. You piece of shit. I tried. Because I've literally grabbed someone before in CQC while facing them, and it's still, like, grabbed them properly. So, javelin. God damn. See, I'm pretty annoyed that it was just wasn't working. He just kept hitting me. <laughs> Anti-tank missile and the javelin. Okay. Well, that's something. That's definitely something. Hello? How y'all doing? So many PMCs, god damn it. Okay, you gotta go around this street, but it looks like I've got a left or a right hand turn option as well. Never mind. Only this way. So I don't know, there's a barricade, so we're going oh no, there's a barricade here as well. Where the hell am I supposed to go from here? Alright, hold on, hold on. That way? God, I gotta go this way? Nice. What? There we go. Alright, I'll just do that instead. See, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's fine. Where do I go from here? Go down and around this way. Well, this is where we came from. I guess I just follow them until something happens. Hey guys. What's up, team? How you going, guys? We're a squad together. Let's celebrate. Do you want to celebrate by telling me which direction I should be going? Because apparently, apparently, I can't go this way anymore. There's like a little gap between the, the roads, but no. Hmm. Well. Guess I'll just use my trusty codec and be like, hey! Otacon, that tank, it kind of blew up and where do I go now? Looks like they just took out a BMP-3. <laughs> it was one of those PMC tank busters. Nice piece of work. I'll say. But now there's one less shield for you to use. Watch out for stray bullets. The enemy's not too discriminating. They're not getting me on a cheap kill. <laughs> I'll watch my back. So what do I do now? Liquid is in the PMC camp just up ahead. We need to get to him as fast as we can, but the fighting between the militia and the PMCs is really heating up. You know what to do. Use the battle conditions to your advantage and proceed with caution. Yep, that's me, proceeding with caution. Chilling out with this group of people. This goddamn ladder just being literally tucked away, like, right here at the end. Like, god damn it. Like, I was literally, like, so close. And then it was just like, 
yep, here's this little ladder that's not in a hugely obvious position, but good luck finding it. And now I can progress. <laughs> so we drop down here into a cutscene. Lovely. <laughs> Oh shit! That's a different one. Why is it crying? The beast. What the fuck? These things are crazy! Oh! Whoa! Dude! Holy shit! What the fuck? Is that? Wait, 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 wait. Holy shit. Holy shit. Are these who I think they are? What the fuck? All of those fucking designs are so fucking cool! That was insane! I'm getting like huge next generation special forces vibes, like... As soon as I saw the octopus arms, as much as I wanted to make a Dr. Octopus joke, I'm like, oh, like I'm getting like decoy octopus in my brain, even though decoy octopus died. Um, and then it, then whoever was floating in the sky doing that stuff is like Psycho Mantis vibes, but like fucking on steroids. And then it clicked for me after that, seeing the whatever was flying in the sky being like Rage is like Vulcan Raven. And then the Beast... It's like Sniper Wolf, because Sniper Wolf is like... 
a wolf, the beast? Are they just referencing those characters? Or is this some... Because <laughs> what the fuck? Like, they all looked so cool. But that was like some fucking Metal Gear Solid 1 shit. In 2014. Am I... Am I onto something there? Because holy shit. That's insane. Let me just, uh... Sell all of these. Because I'm going to be obsessed with getting those, uh... Those points. I know. I know. That cutscene was absolutely insane! Are we getting, like, the NGSF, like, redone? Because they looked, they looked way more advanced and unique than compared to, like, those geckos, which literally just fucking farting machines. That's something special. I can't wait to see what the fuck that was, because that was insanely cool. My mind is blown. What are you guys doing here? Did you, did you guys just like not, did you guys miss all of that? That was just happening over there? Are you guys cool? Like, you guys must have missed the whole thing about... <laughs> you guys must have missed the whole thing. That just happened behind you, right? Like, Jesus Christ. Get out of here. What if, guys? What if I was an... What if I was an oil drum? What if... I, oh, no. I, they, they know where I am. Okay, never mind. I can no longer be an oil drum. Woo! Oil drum doesn't work. Let's get the fuck out. It'd be nice if the oil drum maybe, like, shielded me from getting attacked a bit. I'm gonna need to get some more rations after this. We're going this way. God damn. Alright. Oh! He just was- he was just waiting for me, Jesus Christ. God. I love the traversal. This is so cool. I'm just gonna sit in here, please. Nope. Nobody. Not me. Looks like I'm like at the camp. Oh! I'm just an oil drum. Don't mind me, just an oil drum. There we go. <laughs> Flawless! Flawless. Nothing nothing went wrong with that with that encounter. We we did exactly what we were supposed to. Hell yes. We in the camp, baby. <laughs> Our little boy! I need to utilize him more, I think. Are we about to see Ocelot right now, dude? Yes, sir. We're having connection problems. Go check it out. Yes, sir. Otacon, wait here. <laughs> dude, the fucking snake and Ocelot, like, rematch is going to be insane when they see each other again. Just need him to go LIQUID! Is he even going to be Ocelot anymore? Is there going to be any part of him that will still be Ocelot? Or has he been fully taken over by Liquid and that's why they call him just Liquid?
Who are you talking to, Liquid? Dude. Holy shit. Liquid Ocelot. Liquid. Liquid, yeah. <laughs> Dude. Chill out. Chill out. Oh, hello. Nice. I knew it. Snake, you're here to kill Liquid, aren't you? That's the mission. Are you going to stop me? My mission is to inspect the PMCs. I'm not in a position to take action. All I can do is stand by and watch. I can't help you, understand? I'm a peacekeeper, here to keep order. Understood. Fair enough. Who is that lady? Who's the woman behind him? Activate it. What are you doing? Why would you go fate? Why would you go head on, Snake? You're literally a stealth boy. Go around from the side. What? 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 I heard. I heard the moos. I heard a moo. Yes, it's the nano machines, and Johnny doesn't fucking have any. There you go. That's why Johnny reacts the way that he does to things, and he's a general idiot, because he doesn't have nano machines. Because I was going to say, otherwise he wouldn't be like that. What the fuck? Well, I mean, this is this is a way to stay in cover when no one even knows who you are because they're too busy being fucked up. Liquid! Don't call out to him. That's the worst thing you could do right now, Snake. Dude. <laughs> too long. Liquid. So he's fighting against his nano machines too. Not copies of our father, after all. We are freed of the shackles of fate. 
snake. Brother. We are free. Watch, snake. Watch as I surpass my own origin. Naomi, what are you? Snake, if you won't be a prisoner to fate, then go, fulfill your destiny. What did she just inject herself with? And why is she with liquid? Like, what the fuck? It seems to me that it's like... Liquid's personality... But Ocelot's voice. Because when he's like, when he's going, brother, that's not in, that's not in Liquid's voice. That's in Ocelot's voice. Yeah, hi Akiba. Help me out, please. Making himself useful, that's good. Dude, that whole scene was intense. Oh! Oh, we got a res we have a result screen. I have earned a trophy, Liquid Sun, which was the name of Act One. So I think that's Act One completed. Uh, we're looking at three hours and forty three minutes so far. Two continues. You get DP based on what you do as well. So because I didn't use any special items, I got more points. Interesting. If I assume I had barely any kills or alert phases, I also would have got bonuses. Cool. Uh, well, guys, what that means is I now have to uninstall Act 1 and install Act 2. Um, it has been su suggested to do, like, longer episodes, with, but the way that this has gone, that I've played for almost four hours, I'm not going to do four-hour episodes, just for the fact that, like, I will literally lose my mind. <laughs> uh, so I think if it keeps up like this, doing two episodes per act is probably pretty good. Because uh, then we get, like, we got decent length episodes and it, I don't have to, like, cut a lot out for time. Uh, but there you go. So now that I've completed Act 1, I should be able to do the Act 1 briefing and then do the install of Act 2. So let's press start and see what happens. Um, but yeah, no, that was that was cool. That is That definitely picked up towards, like, the, the ending where we got to see, like, the Meryl stuff. We actually got to see Liquid. So he's being referred to as Liquid. Liquid's personality of like, brother, uh, but Ocelot's voice. So it seems to me that in the time since Ocelot 
you know, got the liquid arm. Liquid is kind of fully taken over at this point, is my it seems to be my understanding. Um, but they're not doing the voice change, so I don't think Liquid Snake's uh, voice actor uh, will come back. But we'll see. We'll have to wait and find out and see if he see if uh, his voice does come back. So let's save the game. I'll just save it over a new slot. Yeah, I'm really really interested to see how that's going to go. To be honest. Ready to install the game. Okay, so I need to start back to the install screen because it's going to uninstall a thing. It's been over one hour since I started the game. Don't overdo it. Uh, try looking far off in the distance or resting your eyes for short intervals. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, this is now going to, to install the next act, so I'm going to sit here with my snake, who now has the solid eye on the loading screen, and, uh, and wait for this, because it's just sat at 0%, so the game is forcing me to take a break. I will be with you soon. Mission Briefing. You can also view this mission briefing from the main menu. Is this mission briefing for Act 2 or Act 1, though? No, this is different. What is that? What is the egg scene? That's insane. Uh, the eggs look so good. Um, I'm going to... Oh, I, I, I can't go back to the main menu. I'm just going to skip it. I don't want to skip and end up somewhere that I shouldn't. So we're going to ride this out. Mission briefing. Okay. Oh, we're getting... Ooh. It's Olga's kid. Oh, it's Olga's kid. That's why August was saying Solidus. I guess. Wow! Um... Uncle Cow? Oh. The, the eggs... They're done. Thank you, Sonny. Sonny. Snake! So, back from the dead? Remember the sun being <laughs> sorry. I'll dig in right away, Sonny. And would you make some for Snake too? Okay. Uh, uh, hey, none for me, Sonny. Uh, shh. Whole day. Uh, someone saved my life. Yeah. It could have been Meryl and her boys. Don't worry. They're doing fine. I could have got away. Are you okay? My body. Up all of a sudden. This is normal. It's not my joints or muscles. It's the nano machines. <coughs> it looked like the PMC soldiers all went haywire in mass, too. I thought it might be a form of ADS, but I didn't detect any aberrations in the EM field. You were lucky. Some of those guys' hearts simply stopped. <coughs> Naomi! It was at Liquid's side. Otacon, did you see her? No, but you're right. Naomi was there. I found traces of her DNA in that syringe you were holding. So it 
was Naomi. Why? Here, let me show you something. Right after it all happened, I got a video mail from Naomi. It was sent to my old address. The cigarette, oh my god. <laughs> but you haven't even eaten any. What is what is happening here with the eggs, man? We grown ups uh, have to watch our caloric intake, you know. <laughs> oh, but thank you. <laughs> I was looking for this. You're not watching your n -n nicotine intake. Sonny. You really hurt her feelings. Yeah. Why don't you teach her how to cook eggs then? Oh, <laughs> like I know how to cook. Hey, check this out. The data's been quarantined. No viruses. The voice print matches Naomi's. And I'm fairly confident the video isn't digitally synthesized. Either. Apple Mac computer as well? What's with the Apple sponsorship, guys? Come on. Sneak. I'll make this quick. I'm in South America. I've been captured and forced to do research. Ah. Liquid. Liquid's goal is to seize control of SOP. Sons of the Patriot system that controls the soldiers. To do that, he needs to analyze the nanomachine structure and find out how they communicate with one another. The nanomachines currently in use by militaries and PMCs are third generation. But their design is derived from that of the first generation. And the basic technology is still the same. First generation? I was the one who created the first generation. Yeah. Machine colony, part of which was Fox Die. Right. Nine years ago at Shadow Moses, I injected it into your body, Snake. Yep. The technology Dude. used in Fox Dive was incorporated, inherited really, by SOP. That's why Liquid has me helping him hijack the system, because I know how Fox Dive works. <laughs> That's true. data. Sonny decoded it for us. Remember now? This is data from the Soliton radar you used at Shadow Moses. I'm guessing Naomi wants us to know the message truly is from her. Yo! Sending the map data in Soliton radar format. Pretty clever. And Mei Ling's helping us out from Hawaii. Mei Ling! Oh my god, Mei Ling! The data she sent was 4D sound data. I, I don't know how Solitone radar works, but all I had to do was change the audio data into video data. It was easy. This Naomi lady seems pretty cool. I love all the Otacons like wallpapers and little details. You can see the little cartoon Otacon on the screen. As you'll recall, following the Shadow Moses incident nine years ago, Naomi was detained by the authorities. But someone arranged for her escape. Yeah, I hear they added that to my rap sheet too. 
I suspect it was actually liquid. He must have taken her prisoner himself and forced her to do research at his facility in South America. Chances are, the location Naomi gave us is the site of Liquid's main base. But there's no actual proof. There's an ongoing skirmish between a new regime put into power by PMCs and a rebel army formed by remnants of the old one. The rebels have hired a small-scale local PMC of their own to stir things up. It's the quintessential example of a war economy market. The new regime is still in shambles, so it's really Pierre Ramamon, one of the PMCs under outer heaven control, that's calling the shots. You might say it's a perfect place for Liquid to make his haven. Or it could be a trap. True. But even so, the payoff would greatly aid our efforts. I had Sunny trace the origin of Naomi's mail. The address is fake, but Sonny was able to track the message back through its proxies based on access date timestamps and data transfer volumes. Apparently, the message originated from a server in South America. I wouldn't exactly call it 100% credible, though. Colonel, where's Meryl? Oh, I know she left the Middle East in pursuit of liquid. I'm sure our sock is on to us by now. We can't chase that line too far. Huh. Which leaves Naomi as our only lead. I've secured you landing clearance at El Dorado International Airport. You'll be acting as a UN inspector. South America. That's about 20 hours from here. Then what's the plan? I'll arrange for them to get you a 4x4. The location Naomi gave us, the PMC's base, is in a mountainous region surrounded by forests. Use the 4x4 to get as close as possible to the PMC security perimeter. From there on, Snake, it'll be a solo sneaking mission. Solo sneaking mission. Hmm. Who's this? <laughs> Campbell's wife? Fancy, Campbell. The rebels are still pitched in battle against the PMCs. The commotion should help you slip into the facility unnoticed. 20 hours until we land. Got it. I'll have a look at the documents. Maybe I'll even have a smoke while I still can. <laughs> I love that Otacon has like a mobile base and a plane. That's so cool. Awesome. Good stuff. So that's the, that seems like that was the Act 2 briefing. So I need to go back and watch the Act 1 briefing now. So let me just, yeah, Act 2 briefing end. Cool. Ooh, it's loading a new logo on the side now instead of the Praying Mantis one. So it's the, it's that octopus symbol. So... I assume this is just going to take us straight into Act 2. So there's going to be some way that I can get to the menu without getting into more stuff. And then watching Act 1 briefing. Ooh, Solid Sun. So we had Liquid Sun, Act 2, Solid Sun. Are we going to get Solidus Sun? Interesting. Cutscenes ahoy, baby. We are, we are playing a movie, so this is going to be a long one. Compared to uh, the first episode, we strap in, baby. Colonel, how deeply are they involved in all of this? The Patriots, you mean? The data we got from Arsenal Gear was a load of crap. Twelve founders who have all been dead for a hundred years. Yeah, I remember. Break. We know they exist today. If the purpose of this battlefield control system is to control IDs, it fits in with their plans perfectly. Seizing control of the world's ID systems and then using them to manipulate the economy and information flow. For the Patriots, that's the ultimate prize. 
You might say the Patriots are the embodiment of the war economy. Everything that Solidus feared five years ago, it's all come to pass. The Patriots are trying to protect their power, their own interests, by controlling the digital flow of information. Now, with the media and global opinion under complete control, not even the UN can stand up to them. Then Liquid's insurrection is against them. Exactly. It would seem as though Liquid has taken up Big Boss's cause. An age of persistent universal warfare. A world where mercenaries are free from domination. In a sense, the outer heaven Big Boss envisioned is already a living reality. You mean the PMCs and their war business? Right now, Liquid is a slave to the Patriots, forced to fight their proxy wars for them. He must be dying to break free of their spell. Beneath the surface, a new Cold War is brewing between Liquid and the Patriots over who will survive. And no matter who wins, the world has no future. Until we stop Liquid and destroy the system, we'll never be free. Snake, what we call peace is an equilibrium kept in check by the war economy. Destroying the system means wiping out the information society, the end of modern civilization. Like it or not, we may have no choice but to protract the system. Snake, here's what we know about the current battle. Rebel guerrilla units are advancing on the base of the government PMC troops. That base appears to be Liquid Safe House. According to Naomi's data, she's being held prisoner inside the compound. That's where she is. Assuming the data is correct. And one more thing. What now? The government PMC troops have been operating at high altitudes. We have reports that it's starting to upset the balance of the nano-machine control system. Meaning? Meaning the low blood oxygen content seems to have an effect on their nano-machines, giving them a slight edge in battle. Be careful. Steer clear of altitude sickness. Got it. Oh, again, again. Dude. He's still got the gunshot wound. Holy shit. Why's he got Snake's face on? What the fuck? What the fuck? This is Decoy Octopus. Dude. Beast. Don't forget this face. Snake with boobs. This is the face of the bastard who killed your comrades. Damn. That's clever. Fucking Your code name is Boob Snake. More gorillas will be coming to storm the safe house. He must be among their numbers. Sooner or later he will come. Don't let down your guard. 
Dude, okay. Okay, vamp. Only reason I'm not entirely surprised that he's here is because it was pointed out to me in the comments at the end of Metal Gear Solid 2. Uh, oi. Um, that Vamp can be seen in the background when Snake and Raiden are having a chat. That Vamp is literally just stood there in the background. Great. So now my face has been marked as uh, the bad guy. So that's good. So that person was called Beast. But I'm getting decoy octopus vibes. Otacon. What the hell? Yeah, that sums it up. Vamp. I'm sure of it. I'll never forget that face. Those were PMC soldiers with him. Is he involved in Liquid's plan? We watched him die in Manhattan. Damn it, he won't leave us alone. Snake. Could Vamp be immortal? Not a chance. <clears throat> a world, not some fantasy game. I swear, the next time he shows up... Not now, Otacon. Right. I know. Snake, according to satellite imagery procured by Mei Ling, the facility where Naomi's being held is to the north, along a mountain road. I'm sending the location to your map. Mei Ling? What's she up to these days? Yes. Taking command of the Missouri, apparently. The Missouri? That's a World War II battleship. The museum contract in Hawaii expired some time ago. I hear it's now being used as a virtual training vessel. No kidding. Not for actual combat training, of course, but rather to get sailors used to seamanship on an analog vessel. Or so I hear. After the mess at Shadow Moses, Mei Ling kind of got put out to pasture. Hmm. Even so, making captain at her age, that's pretty impressive. Rumor has it she caught the eye of some lecherous old admiral who got her promoted. She always did have a thing for her older men. <laughs> Maybe it's too early to retire after all. <laughs> Taking a little training on an analog vessel, Snake? Snake. No. At this point, I've got no need for any more training. Keeping that little Snake and Mei Ling flirting going? Snake, when you get there, remember... The conflict between the PMCs and the Rebels has nothing to do with your mission. There's no reason for you to get involved or take sides. That said, creating some sort of impact on the battlefield could produce better conditions for sneaking. The Rebels are targeting the facility being used by the PMCs as a base. This is more or less the same spot where Naomi's being held. If you aid the Rebels, they might get rid of some of the PMCs and help carve a path for you to sneak in. That freak I just saw, with the tentacles. Was it using the same octo-camo system as my suit? Yeah. I thought that technology was of your own design. Um, actually, I kind of based it on the design <laughs> Sunny snagged off the net. And the data came from? DARPA. <laughs> oh, dude. Words. We're on equal ground technologically. Sorry, I guess I should have told you. And by the looks of things, they know I'm coming, too. Yeah, it could be a trap. Stay sharp. The DARPA chief, which was Decoy Octopus in the original. And Decoy Octopus died. So Decoy Octopus died is what I was getting at. And that's why I'm, like, surprised to see all these weird-ass characters. Um, I gotta tell you that seeing, uh... <laughs> Seeing fucking uh, Snake's face on a pair of boobs <laughs> with tentacles is just fucking bizarre. Thank you so much, Kojima, for giving us Solid Snake's face on a woman's body. Well done. Uh, I'm going to save the game here. I'm going to now locate the Act 1 briefing because we're going to watch that as well. So get ready for that, because we've saved the game. I'm going to return to the title screen. And we're now going to look into the Act 1 briefing after completing Act 1. So let's sit down and get into it for a super lengthy special episode of finishing Act 1, watching two briefings in one go. So I need, apparently, I guess I just 
Should I load the end of Act 1 or should I just load my latest save game? Just load the latest save game. There we go. Okay, so Act 1 mission briefing. So let's sit down, relax, and watch another briefing because I love to sit here and watch cutscenes. I'm actually like, I love this story and I actually love the, st the meat, like the stuff that we're getting to, which is showing us all of the cool, crazy stuff. So I don't mind sitting on these cutscenes. Um, I don't mind. This is, this is pretty cool, to be honest. Like, as long as you guys don't mind sitting with me and watching me just staring at the screen, absorbing all the information, then we're chill. Cause like, I'm, I'm heavily enjoying how the story is going. It's so fucking cool. And I'm seeing it tie in. Okay, so this is how it starts. What was Sunny saying about Solidus taking the day off? So each mission briefing starts with Sunny making eggs. All right, here we go. The Manhattan incident triggered a serious public backlash. Now the U.S. has to think twice before intervening militarily in other countries' affairs. This has fueled a push towards military privatization, with PMCs at the heart of that movement. PMCs? Private military companies? That's right. PMCs have no basis in nations or ideologies. They are private enterprises, driven by profit. In addition to dispatching mercenaries to war zones, they secure weapons and train local soldiers. They're contractors for war itself, and business is good. Their clientele includes developed nations like the U.S. Rebel oh! Power by force. Smaller countries <laughs> and armies of the <laughs> Even terrorist groups. They're in the Americas. Asia, the chickens! Pacific, Europe, Africa, the Middle East. The rise of the PMC has spawned a war by proxy. It's spreading across the globe. That's why it's Solidus's day off. Sunny, we'll eat them later, okay? Sunny, Christina Pacelli. Every age has its mercenary. These PMCs are nothing new. We've been dealing with them since before the turn of the century. No snake. They're nothing like the mercenaries of the past. They're ready. Sorry, I'm a little busy right now. Making Metal Gear. Mark II. The Take the eggs! Don't be mean. It's produced a decisive difference between hired guns and the PMCs of today. The system was developed by Arms Tech Security. Arms Tech? You mean AT Corp? Yeah. In recent years, AT Corp has shifted focus from weapons development to security tools. And since the establishment of AT Security, business has been booming. The system makes it possible to integrate not only micro-level information on individual soldiers and units, but also macro-level information about field conditions and order of battle. So they finally achieved total real-time battlefield control. That's right. And as a result, the global presence of PMCs has grown explosively. Truth is, the rise of system-controlled PMCs has led to a dramatic decline in civilian casualties and human rights violations on the battlefield. A cleaner, safer battlefield. <laughs> Makes for nice propaganda. This, uh, this, watching the Act 1 briefing, I, th I think, definitely makes more sense, uh, after Act 1. Like, I think watching this after is kind of better. Snake! You were smoking again, weren't you? This is a non-smoking plant! <laughs> There's more. State governments and rebel groups can't match the maintenance price of standing forces. Because then it spoils the appearance of Metal Gear Mark II. 
are reliable, easy to use. It wasn't long before everybody had the one to pay for. <laughs> As a result, regular armies began to decline worldwide. Three legends in one room, boys. It's hard to believe, I know, but PMCs are beginning to overtake conventional armies in terms of scale. Nowadays, it's the PMCs who serve as standard battalions. They already make up 60% of all combatant forces in zones of conflict. 60%? The fact is, the world now depends largely on PMCs for waging its wars. I thought it was the UN that authorized the PMCs in the first place. The US abstained from voting on that resolution. In effect, Washington was endorsing PMCs without ever revealing its true intentions. Until they got wind of the uprising, that is. The US has exported too much military power. And now, she's paying the price. That's exactly it. America has now turned war into a form of economic activity. Analysts are calling it the war economy, in that it's picking up the slack for the downward sloping oil market. But I, for one, don't intend to simply stand by and watch it happen. For the PMCs, market expansion entails fanning the flames of war. It means more refugees, war orphans, child soldiers. <gasps> Ryden. Even as PMC soldiers get more specialized, they're also getting younger. Mercenaries spun off from state armies. Unmanned weapons. Child soldiers. <gasps> proxy battles. There he is. War. There are hundreds of PMCs in business worldwide, and their numbers are growing. Currently, five of them are big enough to be labeled global powers. Ah. And one each in the UK, France, and Russia. Reconnaissance has revealed that those five PMCs are run by a dummy corporation that acts as a single mother company. This mother company embodies the five largest PMCs. Oh. Outer Heaven. Dude. Dude. That's right. It's Liquid. Liquid. He's taken command of this immense army and is now preparing to unleash an insurrection. I watched him die. His will lives on, in the body of the man once known as Ocelot. He aims to fan the flames of war even higher, to create the perfect world once envisioned by Big Boss. The one world in which soldiers will always have a place. He must be stopped, before it's too late. Do you understand, Snake? Any means necessary. Just stop Liquid's insurrection. Even if it means... Killing him. You want Liquid dead. Isn't that right, Colonel? I need to see what happens to Big Boss in the following games to make him this way, because I love Big Boss. It's a covert assignment. A hired hit. A wet works op targeting the head of a major multinational corporation. <sighs> Why me? Because of the military might of the PMCs and the effect they have on the economy. War is to the 21st century what oil was to the 20th. The pillar that supports the global economy. Paul Eiding's voice is so good. You'll recall a rather alarming report issued by that American think tank during the Cold War. One that described a new model for perpetual war. What we're facing now is a whole new ball game. Iron Mountain's Delphi technique. That was fiction. It existed only on paper. The reality is far more serious. The global community is concerned, but they're all too afraid of the war economy collapsing to do anything about it. The UN, too. Huh. Sounds pretty self-serving to me. Snake. The screensaver of Little Otacon. Isn't an order from Washington. Not like
like the old days. And it's not something the UN can officially sanction either. But we can't just look the other way while Liquid plots this insurrection. If we fail to act, he'll become the greatest threat the world has ever faced. Snake. You're the only man I can trust. Fine. Let's hear it. Our intelligence on Liquid's uprising originally comes via reports from U.S. Special Forces who were mobilized after we at the U.N. reported our findings. They're tracking Liquid's movements. About 18 hours ago, he was spotted in the Middle East. There's a rebel army in the Middle East, made up of ethnic minorities, waging civil war against the regime in power. The core of that regime's army is provided by one of the PMCs under Liquid's control. What about the rebels? The local militias have hired small numbers of operators as trainers and field commanders. And of course, they've got help from the local PMCs. Right. A proxy war between hired guns. PMC versus PMC. A quagmire of war. All too typical victims of the new world economy. Snake, you'll be sneaking into the conflict zone via transport truck, disguised as one of the rebel army's hired operators. Your first objective is to make contact with our informants, Rat Patrol Team Zero One. They'll be expecting you. Rat Patrol, huh? <laughs> They're a special forces team assigned to the Army's PMC investigation unit, CID. CID? The real rats of the Army? No. I can vouch for them personally. Yes, you can! Friends of yours. You can say that? Say that. Oh! <laughs> oh, that was weird! Uh, <laughs> I wrote this game! Ah! Uh. When you write the script, ah! <laughs> provided under cover of a UN humanitarian aid mission with support from the US military. From there on, though, you'll get no protection and no guarantees from anyone. And you must not leave behind any evidence of your involvement in the area, let alone that of the UN. If word of this ever leaked out, would spark a global firestorm. He really trying to get this cigarette lit. Man needs a lighter. Snake. Will you do this for me? Will you terminate liquid? MCs. I don't need your money. Thank you. But if you're going to spark something, <laughs> spark this. Fine. I'll start my own fire. <laughs> Cool. Act 1 mission briefing. Good stuff. Love seeing the characterization though. Like the writing lengths that Kojima goes to to really expand upon fucking everything. Sometimes a bit too much. Uh, it's just like, what a, what a brain that guy has. So there you go. 
guys, that was finishing Act 1 and watching the mission briefing for Act 2 and then going back and watching Act 1. That was just a lot of cutscene and I hope you enjoyed sitting there with me and taking it all in because god damn this story is it's off to a good start. There's a couple of there's a couple of weird things and weird moments that are just they overstay their welcome but like at the moment the positives and what's happening at the moment in terms of like seeing these legends do their stuff is so fucking cool. So I'm, I'm loving it so far. I'm super intrigued to see what the fuck's going on with, with Vamp and his little crew and Ocelot slash Liquid and his little crew. And god damn, man, like playing in Metal Gear Solid in the future makes you fucking hate Ocelot. It makes you hate Big Boss because they're like the villains and, but then when you're playing in the past, you're like, fuck man, Big Boss is so great, he's got such a good personality, he's so much more likable, and Ocelot's great, like, young Ocelot's so cool, and what he does, and then, like, so when you're playing in the past, I love these characters, when you're playing in the future, you're supposed to hate these characters, and it's just like, god damn, it's, it's like, and I'm, after we finish this game, we're going back in time again to Peace Walker, and then... I'm really curious as to what Peace Walker, Ground Zeroes, and the Phantom Pain is going to do for me in terms of filling in this information about Big Boss. Because I really want to know what the fuck is happening with Big Boss. And then eventually I'm just going to probably end up just taking in the story of Metal Gear 1 and 2, story-wise, to see what happened between Big Boss and Solid Snake in that game as well. But... I am super, super excited to just keep going through the Metal Gear Solid experience. It's it's insane. It's a lot to take in at times, but I am having a great time, and I hope you are too, guys. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Metal Gear Solid 4, and I'll see you next time. Hello. As a little bonus, uh, after I sat through a lot of cutscenes, because there, there was a lot, uh, watching the briefings and getting on the cutscenes like before and after that as well, uh, <laughs> I went and actually rewatched some just to like absorb the information. And I also checked the briefings again to have a look. And I realized because while I was actually watching, I just had the controller down. I was actually pressing L1 occasionally just to see if there was anything hidden in there. Um, I was just trying to like see and interact with it and I did see that it had like select help down the bottom but I thought that that might have just been for like looking up the controls or opening a pause menu while the cutscene was playing because it was also showing stats so I didn't want to touch anything just in case um, but I actually opened it up and had a look because I was curious because I was like cool now I'm not afraid to touch it now that I've just like let it all play and read it all and I think it actually allows us to kind of play around and do a bit more stuff so there's actually some secret stuff that we can do in the briefing so as soon as I realized that I've like hopped out because I want to go through it uh, and show you guys so gonna make this episode even longer with exploring the the two mission briefings uh, that we have for act one and act two and see what we can do so I'm um, instead of re-watching that entire cutscene mostly just gonna edit it down to me actually you know interacting and figuring out figuring out some stuff so let's do that now <laughs> I love that there's literally fucking chickens that are called solid liquid and then I think the one above has a sign so that would be solidus so it's just like so funny that it's like that's why it makes sense that they're like oh only two eggs today solidus must have taken the day off <laughs> it's so funny so I can now actually change stuff which is really cool so I can actually have a look at angles because I am controlling the mark two so I can make this bigger, I can make this the main screen, and I can kind of just go around and have a look. There's the Mark II. Isn't that right, Colonel? I can run into people. I love that you can have the cutscene play out, but like... <laughs> this isn't justice. Check these guys. Where are those, where are those chickens at? Here they are. Hello. Solid, liquid, yeah, and there's Solidus. So funny. Why me? And switching, yeah, switching camera from this, and then I can just pause if I want, and then that's it. I wish I pressed the select button the first time, 
but then I think I wouldn't have been able to actually absorb any of the cutscene information, <laughs> so it's probably a good thing I just watched them through straight. I'm just wondering if, you know, it feels like there would be a reason for being able to do this. Oh, hang on. There you go. There's some ammo. Cool. There's a battery. I wonder if we can go upstairs to where Sunny is. Can I go up here? Oh, I can. Woo! Cool. We can go upstairs. Ooh, got a ration. So you can get items. iPod music. Oh, there's a PS3. Fat PS3. <laughs> I love it. Hi, Sonny. What's up? Can I, like, zap you? <laughs> I love that you can actually see what Sunny's doing up here. Oh, hang on. Ooh. I can use the R1 button to do my little wine, my little wire thing. I don't think it really does anything, though. No. Alright. Hello. There's a rebel army in the Middle East, made up of ethnic minorities. We Zap. War against the regime in power. And of course, they've got help from the local PMC. Little Otacon! Right. A proxy. And then there's like another character on these monitors. PMC versus PMC. Support from the US military. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I actually can do stuff with the, no with the wire. Great. I can poke him. So it does actually do something. Cool, so I guess that's all I managed to figure out in the Act 1 briefing, is you can run around as the Mark II and pick up some items, poke some chickens. And the items you get, pass on. I got some iPad music as well, and there's a PS3 Easter egg. <laughs> Inori no Uta, from Ida Chan Radio. Cool. Got some more stuff. Uh, now I will check out the Act 2 briefing and see what I can get in that one as well. So let's go straight into the Solid Sun mission briefing, see what I can find. A whole day. There's the PS3. Someone saved my life. Yeah. It could have been Meryl and her boys. Alright, let's go and have a look. We got a camera in this one. Can I zoom in? No, oh, I can just get my little wire. Oh yeah, police knots and stuff, cool. Can I interact with the with the TV remote? It made a beep. Okay. Oh god. Hang on. Let me sneak past you. Some of those guys hearts. Oh, it just it's cuz I'm playing a slideshow of a woman. That's great. Come here. Oh, there's a battery over there. Can I squeeze past you? No. Sorry, it should be a nuisance. Let me get the battery. He's just playing a, a slideshow. <laughs> Who is that? Who's it play? Who's This has got to be a person. Minami Akima. Questionable. Questionable. Not surprised. It's literally been in that sort of... Those sort of Easter eggs have been in every single Metal Gear Solid game so far, I, I believe. <laughs> I guess I'll have to check upstairs again to see if there's anything. Doesn't look like there's anything down here in particular. There's Naomi's little blood vial thing that she injected herself with. I got, I thought she injected herself with something at the beginning, but it turns out that she took a sample of her blood, it looks like, and put it in that vial for for us, which is interesting. Uh, another thing that's Apple, yep, the big desktop. So much Apple product placement in this game. Oh, I went upstairs and it's already pulled me out of it. 
Oh, there's some more ammo. Noodles. Sunny. Shouldn't put so much food on the floor, otherwise Mark II machine's gonna eat it. Oh, look at this! Can I interact with the radio? <gasps> Again. You don't react to it though. <laughs> She's got the cigarettes in her back pocket. Let me let me pinch him. Can I take him? No. Ah, PSP! Yes! I love that you can just like see that Sunny's just up to her own stuff, like in here. Can we change the channel for Campbell? I hear they added that to my rap sheet too. <laughs> yep. She's playing PSP. I wonder what she's playing. Oh, and there's an iPod track. Hold on. Nice, because there's a bathroom. Okay, this is this is fucking great. Is Sunny just playing on the PSP? That's so cool. Cool. Digital camera. Open the item window and press the circle button to switch between first person and two person mode. First person mode, use the R1 on the controller. In two person mode, use a controller with port indicator 2 lit. So I think that means. Oh, hang on. One player first person and two player modes. I think like the second player can use it. That's interesting. Botkai 2 theme. Cool. Got some extra items and. Manage to play around with the TV remote. Uh, so that there is the bonus Act 2 stuff that I little interjected in here, playing around.